Can everyone see the screen? Yes. All right. So let's look at the history of birth certificates. The reason why is because, of course, everything is predicated upon the birth certificate, meaning that your name is in all caps on the birth certificate in which they transform into a bond. In the lower left-hand corner of the birth certificate, you will see Midwest Bank Note Company or some type of note company, meaning that it's a note, a bill, a bond. Now, if you don't realize that, look at the red numbers on the so-called birth certificate, and that verifies that it is a bond. And when you come of the age of 18, you add the word bond and age together, and what word do you have? Anyone? When you add the word bond and age together, what word do you have? Bondage. Right, bondage. Someone pull out their Black's Law Dictionary and look up the word bondage. While someone is doing that, let's think about that. The word becomes bondage. So from the from the age of zero to the age of 18, in other words, being born from out of your mother's womb and your capitalized name being put on the birth certificate transformed you into a ward of the state. Your mother was the informant. So as a ward of the state, that's what you are until the age of 18. Then it goes, well, technically as long as is until you pass physical form. But up until the age of 18, you go into the New York Stock Exchange. That's where the word bondage comes in at. At one time, a child was not able to go to prison until the age of 18. Right or wrong? They would go to juvie. Right or wrong? Anyone knows? I think that's I think that's correct. I think that's correct. Guys. Right. Right. Then they put it down to sixteen and then you started seeing it even earlier than that. Children going to prison. But at one time it did not happen to the age of eighteen when the birth certificate became a bond of age. Hence, bondage. Anyone looked up the word bondage yet? Black's like Little Dictionary, it doesn't matter what edition. Look up bondage, B-O-N-D-A-G-E. Who has it? Come on, anyone. Uh, hold on.
Anyone? Uh, Help us out. Uh, bono, bono, bond certificate. I got the fourth. I got the fourth edition of it. Okay, please read the definition. Um, slavery, involuntary, personal servitude, captivity. Right. Mm. Mm-hmm. In old English law, villainage. All right. Villain mm-hmm. to be no, one. So- uh huh. Now hold it there, and read it again after we go to the Thirteenth Amendment. Someone read the Thirteenth Amendment for me. Come on, y'all. Thirteenth Amendment. Y'all can put it into the engine search of your Google or whatever you need to do. Help help us out. Let's connect the information. Let's connect the dots. Thirteenth Amendment. All right, read it for us. It's uh, neither slavery nor involuntary servitude, except as a punishment for crime whereof the party shall have been duly convicted shall exist within the United States or any place subject to their jurisdiction. Mm. So what that means is that you are proving guilty before innocent. That's how they switched that around. Before, you used to be innocent before being proven guilty. But they made you guilty before being proven innocent. Did everybody catch what just happened? Read the 13th Amendment again. All right. It says, Section 1, neither slavery nor involuntary servitude except Except. as a punishment. Right, that's the key word. As a punishment for crime whereof the party shall have been duly convicted shall exist within the United States or any place subject to their jurisdiction. All right, so you have to be duly convicted of a crime. However, what is a crime? According to Cheryl versus Cullens, for a crime to exist, it must be what? An injured party. Injured party. Right, it must, right, it must be an injured party or some damaged property. If there's no injured party, no damaged property, then there is no crime. And therefore, it does not fit what is stated within the 13th Amendment. Now, we go back to to the fact that it says except for. So what would, the, what would be the exception? It says there would be no slavery, no involuntary servitude, except for if you committed a crime and been duly convicted of it. The problem is this is that what is that possibility predicated upon? Anybody knows? The possibility of being convicted? Yeah, what's the possibility? What what is that predicated upon? Because they have to have they have to have a possibility of you being convicted of a crime. In in other words. Right, exactly. It would be the birth certificate. Yeah, As Jaheim was like, just in case. <laughs> that's how they the got to the, uh, the contract. Right. Contract right. That. That's the contract. That yeah, is the contract. Is the birth certificate. That's the contract. The contract. Convicted is, is part of your contract. Right. That's part of the contract. And your yeah, mom informed on you at birth. Your mother informed on you at birth. She is the informant. <laughs> what, what, was that? what was that Jamaican song, informant? Anybody remember that joint? Informant. Exactly. Just sing that for your, just sing that on Mother's Day. Sing that to your mama. Sister Day is Father's Day. 
<laughs> so that's what they predicated upon. They utilized the birth certificate. Now, of course, during the 1789, 1799, 17, um, you know, 90, 1791, I should say, when the Constitution for the United States of America was being passed, they did not have birth certificates at that time period. So that means that that was not part of the process at that time. There was nothing predicated upon that contract of the 13th Amendment at that time. When did that come into play? That came into play 100 years and a little more later. I think it was 1917 or 1907. Right. Maybe 1904, exactly. somewhere in there. Yes, yes, somewhere in there. So that's when they came up with the plan, and this was right before they did the Federal Reserve Banking System of 1914. So that means that they did this probably about 10 years beforehand when they started to delegate that every so-called U.S. citizen needs to have a birth certificate. Because in 1871, everyone went under the trading in, of the Enemy Act. We went under martial law and never came from up out of martial law. So everyone became an enemy of the state in 1871. Yeah, I was going to say that's when that Organic Act passed. Yes, yeah, that's, that's when they... That's that's when they say that three years after the passing of the 14th Amendment, which supposedly was passed in 1868. But we now know that the 14th Amendment was never fully ratified. So that means that everything falls back upon the Dred Scott case decision, mm -hmm. which that's what the 14th Amendment supposedly superseded, which they claim before the passing of the 14th Amendment, the slaughterhouse cases supposedly superseded the Dred Scott case decision. Obviously, it didn't, because you wouldn't have had to have made the 14th Amendment. Okay? This is why we only go by the Constitution for the United States of America, which has the 10 Bill of Rights. Everything else after that is null and void. That's why they started changing from the Constitution for the United States of America to the Constitution of the United States of America, and then eventually it just became the United States Constitution. Because they kept adding more and more amendments. To the doctor. Yes. So around, uh, we was doing in class on Thursday, around 1886 is when Noble Juali Prophet went to the Geneva and he got the mandate for the land the land grants. So that what was year was it? 1928? Okay. Right. But it was uh let me see, it was eighteen eighty six that was when he was born. Mm hmm Yep. So And then in nineteen twenty eight he went to um to Cuba. And when he went to Cuba, he got the land mandate in which that gave him the knowledge of his heritage, which was what's known as the Washita proper, which is 30 million acres in total, which ranges from out of a V shape coming from out of Louisiana, the middle to the highest portion of Louisiana into the various states, more than 13 of them, on up into almost the whole of Canada, giving us 30 million acres that we can fight for. 68,883 acres of that land was returned by way of the Empress in 1992. A year later, she went before the United Nations 
and got the number 215 in 1993 to sit upon the Social and Economic Council or the Economic and Social Council, as it is called, at the United Nations. And that was the seat number for us as Washita. So that is the little history right there. So he went to Havana, Cuba in 1928 and received the land mandate, which he did not understand nor knew that he was part of that inheritance. He just knew he was representing the United States of America, or in this case, America. Let's say that. He was representing America, which is al Murak. And then there was a representative there for the United States. In which that heard that he had this vast land estate and that the so-called United States did not own it. They refer to it as the Louisiana Purchase, but Louisiana Purchase never existed because it was never purchased. It's supposed to have been $15 million in gold and more than $3 million of it sunk beneath, beneath the ocean floor off the coast of Florida coming from that area, allegedly from uh, to Thomas Jefferson from Dr. Lane. Yes. Do they know where the, the uh, gold sank at? No, they just know it was off the coast of Florida. They haven't found it. But that gold was supposed to have came forth from Thomas Jefferson to um, Napoleon for two streets or two barracks for a street and the barracks, a couple of barracks, as they say, which was military barracks from out of New Orleans. And that was for the whole Louisiana Purchase. And Thomas Jefferson gave his sentiments at the time that it was fraudulent. It was a fraudulent deal. However, of course, the United States is going to do what they do. They're going to bow guard and do eminent domain. But this shit ain't this. It's ours. And also, Dr. Lee, um, this is Spain and France have already acknowledged the Washita, right? Right. So that means and so, you know, France and so already has the, said, And so has the United States by way of the Lewis and Clark expedition. When they found us and referred to us as the so-called black Indians. A misnomer as it is, however, it verifies that they knew where we were located at in the state of what they now refer to as Louisiana. So they also know that they did not purchase the land in no shape, form, or fashion, which has been verified by their own departments, which I've shown you all on here many times before, is that the state of Louisiana specifically stated that the land in which that was in question which was owned by Eliza Turner, who is Eliza Whitman, Prophet Noble Jali's mother. My great, 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 great aunt, or great, 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 great grand aunt. It never was purchased. The 68,883 acres of land that was in question in which that the Empress went after, showed and proved that it was our land. George Bush Sr. even verified that it was our land. So that means for the people who are on our land, we can begin to start sending bills. Lot fees on the acreage in which that they sit upon and for how much acreage in which that they say that they have accumulated. They need to pay us fees. They need to, we need to build them. We need our own register office. And we can utilize the same system that they have already set up because we set this system up um, technically. We can utilize the IRS. to audit 
Why? Because the land is not theirs. And this has already been verified. And this is the thing about these other Moors groups that pop up every day, that they have no land ties. They have, so how are they Moors when they don't even have land ties? They can't prove land ties. Land and Moors are synonymous in the de definition. Dr. John Henry Clark already stated, for you to even have a nationality, it must instantaneously tie you back to land, culture, and history. Land, culture, and history. So nationality must have land. Moors who can't prove land ties are not Moors. Let me be honest about that. Let's be clear about that. So all these other little groups that pop up every day, you can go and get information from them, no problem. But they still don't have land ties. Typically, they call themselves moors. It has to be proven. The Washington moors are the only moors who can prove land ties. Case closed. Then also the Washington moors are the real moors then. Is right, right or wrong? Is right, is right there in their own information. Just look it up. Why is the word more still in? If we're not Moors, but yet the word Moors is embedded inside of what they refer to as the um, CDC listing in the federal listing. Why is the term Moors still utilized? If we're not Moors, why is the word Moors embedded inside the definition then or in, inside of the listing? It just doesn't make any sense. It's, the, the term Moors shouldn't even be listed there because if we're just Moors from Spain and Portugal that ruled Europe for 800 years, then the term Moors should be over there, not over here, right or wrong. Right. But the word more is embedded inside of Native American history. The Lenny Lenape are called the Moors. The Nanakotes are called the Moors. They're known as the Delaware Moors. Somebody was just speaking on, uh, you can get on the CDC website. And I'll just about right. to bring that up. You know. yeah. Yes, bring it up. Get on the CDC website and pull up the listing For everything of who they recognize. Moors. Right, and the term Moors is embedded there. Now, if I take that word Moors that's embedded inside the CDC listing and then take it to the definition of land, and you see the word Moors embedded inside that definition, then God damn it, then we can put two to two together. But then again, I forget, maybe niggas can't ask. I think that's probably what's been the problem or the issue. I was just thinking today how uh, myself like you know what man our culture we like so much slide and we make so many excuses for everything. It's like people know in the back of their conscience, but they rather make excuses they just let shit slide. That's why we folks get away with stuff. Well, that's why they're gonna continue getting the same shit that they've been getting. Because if I'm not mistaken, I could have sworn that the sign of insanity was expecting something different, but yet getting the same results. You expect the shit to be different, but you keep doing the exact same thing and keep getting the exact same results. And for you continue doing the exact same thing means that you must be insane. Negroes, blacks, and colors are fucking insane. All right. And that's obvious. <laughs> if you don't want to be insane, then you get your shit straight. <laughs> that's all I can tell you. <laughs> Other than that, you are insane, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> and I just got—I just got to be honest, y'all. Sure. You know what I'm saying? I know I'm acting silly, but I have to be honest because our people are in a predicament right now that we can't keep lagging behind and keep and we can't keep damn strapped in the fence. We got to get our campaign. shit together. We see where most of our right. people is at. Yeah, that's where our people are at. Plus, back in the 1800s, we won that case. 
about our land. Yeah. One that case. Yeah, and you're right. And the Empress brought it right back less than 100 years later and showed and proved. Well, actually, just 100 and some odd years later and showed and proved the exact same results. So, yes, we won the land case before the Dred Scott case decision in 1848, 20 years before the 14th Amendment was passed. So that means if you was able to show land ties 20 years prior to, and then actually that was like 10 years, almost 10 years before the Dred Scott case decision. This was 1848 that you showed land ties and that you was the original owners of the land before the Dred Scott case decision. So are you a goddamn citizen of the United States if you was able to show land ties prior to the Dred Scott case decision? It shows that you have a nationality. And at the same time, it shows that you're not a U.S. citizen. And you are a Washington. Yeah, you are Washington win- In order to win that case, we had to be who we say we are. Right. Had to be. Right, the heirs, the heirs of Turner versus the United States, or Henry Turner versus the United States, and we won the case. Nearly ten, nine years to be writing that because 1857 is when they um, did the dress that case decision. 1856, 1857. So eight, nine years later. So less than ten years later. They did the Dred Scott case decision. The same judge in 1848 that told us that we was indigenous to this land is the same one who said these niggas who claim to be African are not indigenous to this land. (laughs) (laughs) One was free, Moors. One was slave, Negroes. As long as you was a so-called... Slave Negro, you was not a citizen of the United States, nor will you ever be. And that is fine. Because in 1848, we proved that we was indigenous aboriginals of this land called Al Morak, Al Malaka. And then 1868. Another damn 10 years later or so, we get the 14th Amendment. So which one you rolling with? You got three possibilities that you can fuck yourself up with. Huh. Which one? Which one, give you, which one is going to give you the best results? That's the question. 1848, 1857, or 1868? Which one? 1848. All right, there we go, goddammit. David, thank you, brother L. <laughs> thank you, Chief. Check them. Thank you. Check them, check them. That's right, check them. Check them. So I, uh, exactly. What is that? You know that flag or a banner, I'm going to call it, because it's really a banner with the uh, red and blue on it, white trim. I think it's like a, a an American flag or whatever it is. It's got 1865 on it. Uh huh. And it just all you can do is just shake your head and just like, wow, man, people really lost out here. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, it's out here, but they haven't put it together because they're too busy um, chasing uh, the dollar bill. Niggas want to do commerce without having their nationality corrected, without showing land time. Don't do no paperwork. Right. Come on, you they don't have to have do no paperwork. Brother L, they don't have to have paperwork for their nationality, but goddamn it, the first thing they focus on is the goddamn UCC. Fucking paperwork. <laughs> See, that's the irony with these guys that be like, oh, uh, why you want to do all that paperwork stuff? But right. it's like, y'all do the paperwork stuff for everything else. Exactly. So. I don't know. Sure do. right. they they sure right when they need a copy of their birth certificate, they take their monkey ass down to the goddamn Social Security. Yeah. Uh, not Social Security, but the Register of Deeds office. 
or county recorder's office, or either they go to the Secretary of State to get a copy. Yeah, a lot, a lot of people do all this paperwork, and then they want to run away from to Africa, and then they get to Africa, and then it's kind of like now they cornered and by themselves. I mean, well, you should have did the paperwork and probably stay over here, but I ain't gonna right. do it. Exactly. Like they, like that Africa is going to be the um hub for them. Them niggas over there know that you a nigga from over here. <laughs> I never they, did those, are, those, those are our brothers and sisters, but they know that we are from here. They know that we've been here longer than damn 400 years, and they didn't bring all millions of us over on no goddamn slave ships. I can say they never even heard of no goddamn enslavement until damn just like us in 1977 with that goddamn uh, uh, Alex Haley shit, Roots. Yep. And that's the vast majority of so-called Africans. Now, of course, you have a few in Ghana in which they, they tell you about the castle where they held the slaves at until it was time to board the ships. But the emperors already told us that that was only about 15% of our ancestry. The other 85% of our ancestry was already here, meaning that they came from the Omex. They came from the Shi people, as we was called. Hence, the Shi people become the Washita, Washita. Washita. We are still the same she people to this day. The Washita, the Washata. We are still the same people to this day. With some admixture of our African brothers and sisters from the last 400 years. When I sent my information to the geneticists, Brother Cannon, he sent my genetic information back and said 87% of my genetic heritage was here, from here. 87%. God damn. From here. That tells it all. It means be slacking. Be slacking, y'all. So then we come to find out that Noble Drali already told everybody that he was raised on the Cherokee Reservation. So that means that he was a freeman on the Cherokee Reservation. At least that's what they would say that he is. As if he didn't have Cherokee heritage. Well, I can tell you, goddamn, he had Cherokee heritage. Why? Because I'm his first cousin four times removed. And I did the research. The name Butler, the name Days, all that shit goes right back to Cherokee. My mother's side of the family was Days, D D A I S, Days, and that was a name on the Cherokee listing. You go to the Doss Road, the name Butler is on the Cherokee listing, as well as also on the Choctaw. And then I'm related to the Richardsons. They are the Hawani Sapani tribe known as the Blackfoot. So when you hear people say, well, I got Blackfoot. I got Blackfoot in my family. Hold up, hold up, nigga. No, you don't. You get Hawaii Sapani. You are part of the Sapani tribe, which comes from right out of here, out of Harrister, um, Hollister, which is right here from out of North Carolina. Right here from out of um, Warren County. Going into Virginia. That's crazy because um, I was told that I was Blackfoot growing up. Exactly. The word. Nobody knows. But now you know. But now you know. Uh huh. In my big yeah, in my big house in North Carolina. Right. That's what I do that. I go to their powwow every year in April, the Hawaii Sapani tribe. They are known as, this is, why North, this is why North Carolina is called the Tar Heel State. Tar Heel, Blackfoot, same thing. And God, uh, can you uh, put that in the notes so I can write that down? H-A-W-I-I. 
S A P O N I. How we Sapani tribe. How we Sapani tribe. The real black foot. I was told by Hawaiian. I was told by one. We got a treaty with them. Yeah. Yep, sister from Hawaii. She said uh, she read yeah. my shirt, and she said, uh, "Well, I, 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 uh, I'm busy talking to her." She said, "Oh no, 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 no! Stop, 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 stop! Uh, we do research. We, we, I know who you are. I know you are Washita Moore. Says on your shirt, we have a tribe. To, we have a, a, a treaty together. Exactly." She sure told me that. Yeah, she had to. See, Brother L, you be meeting all the people who tell you the truth, don't you? Yeah, I meet him. I run into him. Yeah, exactly. And you've been running into him for the last 10 years, just running into him. And they've just been I coming out and telling you. Right, and they just be coming out and telling you all the damn truth, don't they? Yes, they do. Yeah. <laughs> What other proof do you need? How does that? I know that's big down in And see, the Howie Sapani tribe is also connected to the Lumbi. So when I went and did my true ancestry, it came up that I had Lumbi. What they were talking about is Howie Sapani, because I'm related to the Richardsons, who are the Hawaii Sapani tribe, who are the Blackfoot, who are the so-called Tar Hill, and the reason why it's called the Tar Hill State to this day. The remnants of the Cherokee, of the Tuscarora people. As you know, the Tuscarora people left from out of North Carolina and went up into New York and join with the so-called Iroquois Confederation. Hold on, Doc. Say that, say that again, the Tuscarora. Tuscarora, yes. This is our heritage. All these different names for these tribes come back to one, which is the Washita. The descendants of the Omex who been here in America for over 5,000 years, proven by their own calendar of 3,113 B.C. and we add the 2,124 years and we had over 5,000 years here. And then these 5,000 year Negroes was related to the 50,000 year Negroes in which that Albert um, Goodyear talked about that he found in Savannah, Cuba. I mean, Havana, excuse me, Savannah, I'm talking too fast, Savannah, Georgia. He said that we was there 51,700 years ago. And then them Negroes was related to the 100,000 year Negroes in which that Paul Barton speaks about in his book, The Susu Economics. Yep. In which that the Empress sure. speaks, right, in which that the Empress speaks about within her book, The Return of the Ancient Ones. So we got some ancient Negro blood up in here. Not recent Negro blood of just 400 years ago. Majority of our Negro blood is hundreds and thousands of years ago. Not 400 years ago. And this is what they keep telling you, trying to keep you from out of the position to take back your goddamn land. And that's what all this shit is about. Oh, we got all you Negroes from Africa. (laughs) We got all of you from Africa. Yeah, yeah, y'all was in the trees talking about Oonga Boonga and shit. I got a a question. I got a question, guys. Yeah. I was taught that there was like some kind of disease in the Indian Trail um, with the Indians. Is there is that like true to that, or is that kind of like? Yeah, they gave. Yeah, they gave. They gave the Indians smallpox on blankets. Were these Negroes, or were they? They was Negroes. Over ten thousand on the Nick on the um so-called trails of tears were Negroes.
over 10,000 of us on the Trolls and Tears with Negroes coming straight out of North Carolina. Most straight of out of don't know that. Niggas be hearing about straight out of Compton. No, straight out of North Cacalac. Was it crazy nigga named Ice Cube? No. <laughs> <laughs> Most of the people don't know that. Right, they don't Most know. Part that. of the trail of tears. Right, over ten thousand of them. Main part of the trail, tra- tra- main part of the trail of tears. Yeah, exactly. majority. Right, they claimed that it was over one hundred thousand of us, and more than ten thousand of us was Negroes along that time, along the um, trails of tears, coming from out of North Carolina, South Carolina, Georgia. Also, you have another Trails of Tears in which they came from out of Ohio. And all of us came down from Andrew Jackson, mulatto ass, um, because he actually, in a sense, he had to do what he had to do, and that was trying to save us, because he was a mulatto himself. So he had black blood. So instead of us getting uh, murdered and massacred, genocide off the land, he said, look, how about you just send all of them into Oklahoma? And then, of course, once we get to Oklahoma, hell, we become what is known as the Creek, the Chickasaw, the Cherokee, in other words, the five so-called civilized tribes. If you check the Doss Road from out of Oklahoma, you will find all five civilized tribes. Well, how the hell did all five civilized tribes get there? Oh, because they damn... Did the Trails of Tears from out of North Carolina, South Carolina, um, Georgia, lower parts of um, the upper part of um, Florida, and that would have been the Seminoles, the um, the Choctaw, the um, Cher- the Cherokee, the Creek, which is Muscogee. We got to start reading between the lines. This is really what happened. And they can't hide it anymore because it's too much factual information out right now. Yes, the is. whole proof the whole proof of everything is what I taught fifteen years ago when I said, Hold up, how many of you Negroes got these teeth in your mouth called shovel teeth? <laughs> and I know then I do. And then ninety seven then ninety seven percent of the damn audience lied and then put up their hands. I said, Why y'all up in here lying? Get them goddamn hands up. This is the goddamn stick up. Get them goddamn hands up. And when I did that, all them niggas put all them niggas put their hands up. And y'all remember the commercial? Put your hands up if you sure. All them niggas were sure by now. I said, yeah, that's what I thought. All you niggas damn got these damn teeth in your mouth and you up here lying to yourselves. Mm-hmm. You indigenous from here. I told him that shit 15 years ago, and now all of a sudden, everybody damn uh, is a fucking master. Dane, um, Dane Calloway, uh, 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 research guy, and uh, 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 Camille, uh, and all these guys came out of nowhere. I'm dropping the same shit that we've been saying for over 15 years. But proving it genetically, historically, DNA-wise, your genes or genetics, biology, chemistry, I'm talking about they're not Moors. <laughs> And that's why I can't mess with these Negroes who comes out 15 years later lying to the people. Because these are agents trying to deceive the people, but people get caught up in the shit that they say instead of looking over towards this way and get the real truth. That we are Moors. And by saying that you're not a Moor, you disconnect yourself from the land instantaneously. You're just a slave saying that. Right. You ain't nothing but a slave. Mm-hmm. You're a slave Negro, not a free Negro, not a free more, but they happy being like that. And then act as if you can go in commerce being property. Let me tell you all something. Property can't own property. 
point blank. So as long as you identify this property, as long as your mother sold your ass into slavery, she became the informer. Exactly. She is the informer. And then as long as you are listed on that birth certificate with that name in all caps, you are the dummy. You are the straw man. The straw person. Homo. Straw me is homo. You are the artificial entity. The artificial person. And people are happy in that status. And then think they can go into commerce with that same status without correcting it? You out your goddamn mind. Go ahead, guys. Sorry. Man, I saw some, a wild uh, shirt video on uh, YouTube. They, and uh, I think it was like one of these Asian countries. Uh, China, I don't know. But uh, they had straw men all on, uh, underneath the table. And they was mechanically coming up and down. And they had the ball representing the head because they was all headless. And every time the ball come up towards the edge to a straw man, it would lift up, and then and then it, the ball would go down towards the metal. And then they had three um, crows at the top represent the higher class. And the video it was explaining the symbolism behind it. Like they they called the straw man lower class, and they said that the crows was upper class, but they never got in depth like about the you know what I'm saying. Right, it's the same thing. The Wizard of Oz. You seen the yeah. crows land on That's top of the straw about. man, mm-hmm. on top of Michael Jackson in the waves and shit. The crows came right up on his ass. And that's the same thing. You have the bougie new, uh, 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 bougie boule, which symbolizes the crows, the upper class Negroes, thinking that they made it and shit. And then they look at the straw man, i.e. the poor people, who has nothing, living check to check, and they both in the same goddamn position. The crows and the goddamn straw man is in the same position. They both artificial entities in that sense. Yeah, for these uh these celebrities, <laughs> they think they high up, man. But then, I mean, they they can right. easily be thrown down easily. Exactly, exactly. I mean, and that's, I mean, they and that's them, what the crow represents. They call themselves upper echelon, so they know that they upper class, but they know they lower class. You know what you're saying? Right, right, exactly. And they still don't own nothing. They still got to pay taxes on their cars, on their houses, on their goddamn land. Still got to say, they still got to do the exact same thing that the poor person do, except they just have more of it to do. That's all. That's it. Mm-hmm. Hell, I got more than most of them have. <laughs> really? Brother L been here. We got a damn mansion. Sure do. Slept Hell, we drive BMWs. <laughs> Hell, we drive Mercedes, BMWs, and all that shit. But guess what? That shit don't mean nothing. I kind of figured you would. That shit don't mean nothing. You know why? Because if you ain't down, if you're still paying taxes, car taxes, land taxes, house taxes, and all that shit on your houses, on your land, on your cars, then guess what? You ain't made it. Nope. And it don't mean anything. So they driving, they try, they driving um, Bentleys and they driving uh, Lamborghinis and they driving all. The, nigga, you pay hundreds of thousands of taxes annually on that shit. Oh, you got a big ass mansion that you pay twenty five million dollars for, but how much you paying in taxes? Oh, two million. Oh, okay. <laughs> Birth of people over with that whole 
And then and then you get a fake star. Right, then you get a fake star on, on a Hollywood Walk of Fame. <laughs> and you get called and you get called a star. <laughs> but yet don't know the signs that you ninety three percent star does material and don't know the other seven percent on how to turn into an actual star. But yet you sell your soul to Satan every day in order to damn have to get more money in the industry in which that don't love your ass. That's on that same cycle. Same cycle. But they don't want to know how to not pay taxes? Fuck that shit. <laughs> I don't pay don't I don't pay to. taxes on, that's, that's... I don't pay taxes on land, houses or cars. And I'm not going to. Why? Because this is my fucking land. Exactly. It don't make no damn sense. It just doesn't make sense. I'm sorry. But of course it makes a lot of sense if you get told that you were just a Negro that they brought over here from Africa 400 years ago. And all of you are just African. You have an African ancestry and that's it. You're West African. Then how the hell I get all this damn East African in me? I get Australian in me. Hold up, how the hell I get Native American in me? If you just brought somebody over here 400 years ago, shit, who the hell been mixing in for the last 150 years? Because you, we only been out of slavery allegedly for 150 years, right? Right. They they claim that they let you out of slavery in 1865. Allegedly, you're supposed to have been out with the proclamation, Emancipation Proclamation, which was 1862, 1863. But you didn't find out until two years later, 1865, that you was free niggas. So, 2024, 1865, give you how many years? They've been, they've, been, uh, they've been free for two years, you know, all that time. Didn't even know right. it. Right, right. They was free for two years. Didn't even know it. They didn't get around to the majority of the of the plantations until two years. Then master had to come and tell you, well, by law, by law, we had to let you go. You hear that, Toby? We had to let you go. Let them go two years that's ago. The, that's the that's that. the low. That's the low now. So somebody count for me. Twenty twenty four in eighteen sixty five. How many years is that? That allegedly Negroes been free. One hundred and fifty nine. Thank you. So you've been free one hundred and fifty nine years allegedly. Yeah. Not to mention Jim Crow and sharecropping. Right, right, right. Not not saying reconstruction. Yeah, reconstruction. And the stoppage and the stoppage of the reconstruction era, the implementation of the Jim Crow laws, which lasted all the way up until 1965, until they started saying, okay, we're gonna have to do busing in the 1970s, and then started allowing for Negroes to go to white colleges and white high schools and white elementary schools and so forth and so on. You have to bust a certain amount of niggas to your schools. Yeah, they said, well, all of the Negroes were. And that's what happened. I mean, I mean, civil rights movement was pretty simple. It was, it, it's not hard. Niggas was fighting for not to be civilist more tools, which means dead in the eyes of the law. So they was fighting for civil rights, but yet not being recognized as a human being, as Malcolm already told them. In order to get civil rights, which means not to be seen in the eyes of the law as dead, civilist more tools, and you want to be seen in full life, then you must be seen as a human being first. However, a human being, according to the Ballantine Law Dictionary and the Black Law Dictionary, means monster. Like a dungeon dragon.
It means oh, monster. Man. So that means that you even have to go above the title of monster. And what title is that? Oh, I know. Indigenous, Indigenous. Aboriginal, more. Yes. That was all above monster. More is above a monster. And this is why they don't like you using the term more. And they want, as soon as they hear you say more, oh, you just a Negro. <laughs> oh, you black. You black and colored. You, you, you blacky. You Afro-American. Yeah, most they people, don't want you. Uh, uh-uh. Most why? people get problems, but they're our own, our own people. Right. Why, why, would, why would crackers have a problem with you calling yourself a more? But yet, they don't have a problem with you calling yourself Afro-American, African-American, Negro, Black, colored. They don't have a problem with none of those terminologies. No, they don't. In fact. Uh-huh. Well, no, I, just, I was going to say that Dave Chappelle thing when he said um, they got no problem. They got a problem me saying faggot, but they ain't got a problem me saying nigger. Right. You know? Right. They don't have no problem. Uh, they have a problem with you saying indigenous. Right. Yep. And aboriginal. Yep. They sure do. So, they have a problem with you saying more. They have a problem with you saying indigenous. They have a problem with you saying aboriginal. But they don't have a problem with you saying Negro, black, colored, Afro, Afro American. They have no problem with those types of things. Nope. So that means that we should continue saying more then. Because whatever agitate them must be the correct shit. <laughs> That's right. Whatever they don't like, because if we was putting on the public record that we was African American, oh, you that's so nice. You're going to put that on the record? Sure, we get you a some. <laughs> but say you're a more. Oh, shit, you're going to the damn sovereign citizen section. I don't give a fuck. Put that shit on, put that shit on the public record. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> right. Put that, put that on the public record and give me my damn R number. Give me my damn registered number. I don't care. I don't care where you put that shit at, as long as it's on the public record. So see, see, this is the problem. So they so they tie every single more to the sovereign citizen movement. But yet they don't if you call yourself a Negro, black, or colored, or a so-called African American, they don't tie your monkey ass to the goddamn sovereign citizen movement. Nope. And so this is why it's safer for Negroes, black, and colors not to even be called Moors because they don't want to be part of the sovereign citizen movement in that regard. So they think that they are going outside the bounds of being property, but yet they still property because that's what the birth certificate state that they are. Yep. Anytime a person have a birth, a birth certificate, which is a bond, and you come of age 18, you are in bondage. You are still a ward to the state. And now you have, because you're 18 years old, you have now um, become the collateral for the debt of the United States. However, Moors are sovereign, not sovereign citizens, two different things. You can't be a citizen and a sovereign at the same time. That's an oxymoron. And only a moron would say some shit like that. But Moors are sovereign. We are indigenous sovereigns. Yes, we are. Because we're no longer bound by bondage. We are free. Free! (laughs) That's right. (laughs) (laughs) And this is what they don't like. So they'll test us. All right, let's see how much uh, uh, this this, um, Moor claims he knows. Let's stop him, Bill. <laughs> They'll test you. They want to see what's going on. They want to know what you know. See if you're real about this shit. Or if you're going to fold within a matter of seconds and revert back to Negro, Black, and Color. I don't know, boss. <laughs> I'm sorry, boss. I didn't mean to get so up at this. Are we see. What get me is a lot of these moors talking about they don't need no paperwork. That's what get that's what kills me, man. 
And them the main ones that will have everybody fucked up. <laughs> Be right in damn jail, and then they have a bitter taste in their mouth. Because these niggas don't even have, these niggas don't even have more put on documentation. Now, when we read the 10 maxims of law, what does it state? It says your truth must be expressed in a form of an affidavit. So whenever these Negroes say that they don't have any paperwork on the public record, then that means that their truth has not been expressed. They're not Moors. They're still Negro blacks and coloreds. They're still slaves. They're mm. still employees. Right. They're still citizens. They're still privileged citizens. Title citizens. Second class citizens. Then you got the ones that go to uh, the facto court, you know, lower court, with their stuff, change their name. They have no authority in none of the courts because they're still Negro, Blacks, and colors. They're still property. And as long as you still identify as property, you have no rights. You only have privileges. And there's only privileges in which they, the government gives to you, bestow upon you such as your birth certificate, your driver's license, your social security card, and so forth and so on. These are privileges, all predicated upon the birth certificate, which is the bond, the main bond. Everything is predicated upon the birth certificate. In other words, you call yourself, let's say you call yourself Severe Bay. Well, you shit, you're still Anthony Jenkins. <laughs> You know what I was talking about, didn't you? <laughs> you have no, you have no damn. Just, just think about it. You have nothing on the public record. Your truth is not expressed in the form of an affidavit and put on the public record. You don't know the ten maxims of law. That's why you missed that project. But yet you're teaching people the science of law. How? Right. You're not a proper agent of Moors to do so. You're not a proper agent of a Moor to do so. You are a agent mm-hmm. of the government. Uh-oh, uh-oh. <laughs> yep. <laughs> That's what I was told. Go, go to the, uh, the judge to get your stuff done. I was like, why? I already, I already did what I did to put it on the public record. Why I got to do that? Exactly. Exactly. So you're telling me oil and water, but, you know. That comes mm-hmm. with a lot of people. I don't want to keep you, you know, in bondage, keep you a slave. What about? They be having their stuff straight, but then they tell you to do something else, and, you know. It don't matter. matter. <laughs> if you, that's what the Negro Black in college. It's just like, uh, no. Bypass over that. Nowadays, they create uh, this thing called ops. You got it. In uh, social media. <laughs> People are just ops right, All right now. So, Sister Riziki just called me just a second ago and said they just did a new drafting of a bill to be able to draft people into the military once again. Oh, yeah, I saw a that. A new draft that. bill. Oh, y'all seen that? Okay. Does that does that apply to you who have your nationality on the public record? Nope. No. We didn't oh, okay. That. Thank you. All right. There we go. Exactly. This is why it's important to have a nationality. Otherwise, your ass ends up to a desert storm, a desert, whatever desert that they'll send your monkey ass to. <laughs> mm-hmm. All the damn nineties was a goddamn desert. Y'all remember that? It was Desert Storm, then it was Desert, what else? What else was it? It was another damn desert. What else? Uh, desert Freedom or something like that. But, uh, I don't know, uh, but Desert, what? what? Come on, y'all. It was Desert, uh, uh, Rocky, it was Freedom. Uh, yeah. Rocky Freedom. Rocky Storm. Rocky Freedom, I but, think. But whatever it is, it's going to be a desert. <laughs> <laughs> Best believe that. They're going to send your ass to a desert. And why they have to draft a bill? Because they know they're going to have to go to war. This can ready to be third on, yeah. on World War Three. That's what it's got. It's going to be a because, desert of bodies. 
Right, because Putin ain't chilling. <laughs> and Israel ain't chilling. And Israel is the damn nation spy state for the Middle East. That's why they put Israel there. Yep. The United States okay. put Israel there in the 1940s to be the spy unit for the Middle East. Look and see what them damn Arabs are doing. Kill off some goddamn that? Palestinians. Okay. Yes. It was desert. It was desert shield. Yes, desert storm, desert shield. Oh, desert like shield. That's what it was. Desert storm and desert um, shield. It was two deserts. They're gonna have the damn third desert. It's gonna be desert decrepit. Think <laughs> <laughs> that more of these people join the um the brick thing too. Yeah. Anybody getting rid of the dollar and everything? So. Eighteen to twenty-six, I think that's the age group. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Well, once again, only way to get from out of that, like what they did to Muhammad Ali, they sent his ass to jail because he didn't have what on the public record. That's another. Right. So he's Muhammad Ali, but he ain't had shit on the public record. So what happened? They fucked him up. Ah, oh, that. Come on. How many years was he in jail? Muhammad Ali? I don't think he spent any time in jail too much. Yeah, but but they stripped his goddamn title away from him. He ain't had sure no did. nationality. Sure did. Took it away from him. Right. Talking about he religious. No, that didn't cut it. Right. Well, no. Mm. Mm-mm, mm-mm. Nigga, you ain't still got Muhammad no nationality. Ali, that's not going to cut it. We, mm-hmm. we don't care. Right. Google we don't care if it's changed. Right. That is the that was the problem with the nation of Islam then. That's the problem with the goddamn nation of Islam now. Still no nationality. Nothing on the public record. A five oh C one a five oh one C three organization. Not even a goddamn five oh eight C one A, but a five oh one C three. That's the problem with the nation. That's the problem with the nation of Islam now. That's the problem with the Moral Science Temple of America right now, especially the ones that's under Joan um, um, Bay. What is his name? Joan, yeah, Love Bay, Joan, whatever his name is. What is his name? Jones Bay? Uh, 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 I think his he name got is them got, That's yeah, it. I think it's so. Jones Bay. Yeah, he got, he got them goddamn Moral Science, Science Temples of America under a 501c3. And calling everybody else fraudulent and bootleg and shit. Yeah, they do. Nigga, please. Nigga, they please. Sure I'm going to have to tell you, like, uh, 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 like, um, like, damn, showing up told Bruce Leroy. Nigga, please. <laughs> Just my converse. <laughs> <laughs> they might try to send some of the you Noir know, brothers to the, you know, draft of some yeah. of them. Right. Damn. And see, this is the problem. And if they don't change this shit, <sighs> once again, the Negroes were thinking that they'd be out of the they would be out of problems because they are part of a religious organization. When this shit is about nationality, religion is secondary. This is why originally it was called the Moorish uh, uh, divine. No, it was actually it was called the Moorish National and Divine Movement. Right. Taj changed it around to saying the Moorish Divine and National Movement, but during the time of Prophet Nobajali, it was called the Moorish National and Divine Movement. Religion was secondary. Necessary, but secondary. Nationality was always the call of the day. Let's get that shit straight. All right, so I'm going to end class here. Are there any questions or anything that we're going over? Because this has been a problem in which we keep seeing over and over again, and now people keep getting caught up into the shit because they can't oh. figure the shit out. But it ain't hard to figure out if you it's listen to hard. the right people. It ain't hard. Listen to the right people. But, no, y'all want to listen to them. King, Dane Calloway, goddamn research guy, and all this. All this that's historical information. That ain't no goddamn nationality. No. Historical information, religion, that shit ain't going to get you out of this shit. Nationality is going to get you out of this shit. 
Exactly. All of those things are secondary. All of those things go along with nationality, and that's fine, but the primary thing that needs to be the focus is nationality, point blank. All right. I'm going to say hi. Take watch to each to everyone. All right. Yes. Um, with my case, I called down the um joy uh, the the cab courthouse, right? Uh, mm -hmm. they told me two hundred and forty two dollars to do an appeal, but I was wanted to ask you, isn't that a form you can fill out to say you ain't got no money or make money that you can you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah get um download the indigent form from off of um the Georgia um um Secretary of State website or uh, okay, on the yeah. court website. Yeah, indigent. It's called indigent. I N D I G E N T indigent indigent oh. yep tell them that tell them you ain't getting right um um go to the civil file section of Superior Court and download the form if they don't got the form there then just go down to Fulton County Courthouse and tell them that you need a indigent form and that you gonna throw that shit out right then and there and go and open up that damn um appeal case. Got you. Is that a, the same as the affidavit of poverty? Yeah, you can do with that. Yeah, that's fine. All right. Well, I'm saying when I Google it, that's what came up after they were the property. Okay, right. gotcha. But, but use that. Whatever, whichever one that they call it nowadays, they used to call it indigent form when I was coming into this information. They probably done went to, yeah, uh, nigga, just say you ain't got no money. Call it a, uh, <laughs> a non-property form. You know what I'm right. Yeah, so who knows what they did. But same shit, fill it out and give it to them. And you got, and you got what you need. All right, Nisi. All right. All right. Peace to everyone. Uh, peace. Peace, Nasu. Peace. <laughs> peace. Peace. Yeah, I tell you what, story is.